Good day, everyone. Thanks for joining us for part one of our three-part series on the Report Wizard. Matthew is our residential expert on the wizard, and he's going to lead this series. Matthew, the sign-up shows, let's look here. It looks like you have about 15 who have never used the wizard. So obviously they're interested in what it can do for their reporting. You have 11 who signed up that are fairly new, one to three years. Four have three to five years of experience. And you have four of what I would consider to be very skilled users, having used the wizard for over five years. Regardless of that experience level, they've submitted some good questions for you to cover at some point in the series. And speaking of questions, everyone, if you have those while Matthew leads us today, drop those in the chat box and I'll get them to him at some point during the webinar. So, Matthew, what are you covering for us today? All right. Um, thank you for that introduction, Sharon. Um, great as always. Um, so a little bit about the session here on the slide. Um, I'm basically, I'm going to be going off slides here in a little bit, and I'm just going to be walking you through uh, the wizard itself and, and showing you some of the basics. Um, and then we're going to start getting more and more advanced. Um, hopefully by session three, we're going to see some, some uh, of the more advanced things that you can do with with the wizard and um, um, yeah you'll hopefully get a little insight between these three sessions into just how powerful this this uh, program is and hopefully make it uh, easier for you to report things so uh, first I wanted to be up front with the pricing I know Sharon has offered a discount for those of you attending but uh, $24.95 is the current list price for, and that includes one design license. And I'm gonna go into a little bit with the license uh, in the actual program, but the important thing to know is that you can hot seat that license. You do not have to have, you know, one account have it. It can be shared over um, multiple accounts you just you can only have one at a time so you know person a in your office is designing something today um, person B wants to design something tomorrow person A just needs to switch the license over to person B so um, unlimited users can be put into the report wizard these are different users than what is in student manager so if you've got um, uh, you know, some people that you just don't want to be running reports at all, maybe an intern or something, um, then yeah, just don't give them access to the wizard. Or maybe you've got some uh, higher ups that, that all they do is just need reports uh, from student manager data, then, um, then yeah, just give them access to the report wizard, don't give them access to student manager. So you, you can do uh, different things with your users there. Uh, we do allow you to get more design licenses if you need them. Uh, list price of those is $9.95 for those. Um, we do allow for a 90-day free trial if you are, since we do have so many of you that have uh, not seen the report wizard and you want to try it before you buy it, you can. Okay, so that's that. I'm going off slides now and let's see the wizard. Uh, that's not the wizard. That's the wizard. Um, notice I am running the latest version 8.0 um, that came out a couple of months ago, I believe. Um, I've also turned on the the office style um, toolbar up here. It replaces the the native menu that's in it. So those of you that are experienced with the uh, um, uh, report wizard this probably looks a little different than than what you're used to and I'll show you how to turn these on um, or turn this on if you want it uh, here in a minute uh, kind of the first thing here is in the, the home screen which kind of replaces that file menu uh, for those of you is it gives you the buttons directly in to start creating the report edit an existing report you could copy from an existing report um, delete, 
yeah, I don't know if you really want to get into deletion, but um, definitely copy edit new, and I'll be showing new as we do more things with that. Uh, previewing report, printing report, uh, print setup, you probably won't have to get into, uh, but I'll show you those when we get to um, making an example. Find reports gets you, lets you search through. Import and export. I've got all sorts of reports from, um, well, you guys. Um, it, some of these I was helping you with them or uh, you know, something just wasn't quite right, needed tweaked or something. Um, or some of you sent me reports that, hey, this really works well and, you know, just kind of wanted to show off your skills. So to do that, you export an existing report and you can right click to get to the export, but uh, export the report and then you can import. Important thing to note here is you can't import and export from student manager reports. These are a completely different system, and you'll see why once we start building a report, why uh, they're not interchangeable between student manager and the report wizard. So you are creating brand new ones in the report wizard. Uh, data, there's not much here, mainly formulas. Uh, I'll probably get into formulas session two or session three, okay, uh, probably session three. Um, so we'll see that more. The other data sources, so this would be if you've got an Excel document or a CSV document of like SIP codes, you know, the CIP codes, um, where you're, you're, you've got the code in manager, but you need the long form uh, displayed out on the report wizard. You can use this to link um, that code and, and get that other information. Uh, so that's definitely an advanced feature. I won't actually be showing that uh, in this series. So uh, main thing though, under tools, and let's, uh, the license manager, that's when you get the license and, and get it inputted into student manager. So really that's part of the install process. You won't get into that much. Main thing is users and groups. Uh, so this, the version ultimate, this tells you that this is set to be the design person. If you want to set them to just be a viewer, you set them like that. Um, yeah, so if I set viewer, save. Now let me create a new user, Matthew. Um, M O Matthew uh, Acewear. Just real quick, um, I'll probably need at least, um, I'm gonna put advanced user is really able to get into users and groups and the change path, you know, some of these other um, advanced features. Um, so if you don't want people getting into that, um, you can uncheck that. So, and it automatically defaulted to ultimate because the admin, I already set to viewer. So yeah, I can set up this person to be the ultimate, save it. Um, well, I'm in as admin, so I'm gonna switch this new account back to viewer. And yes, I wanna save and make the admin the ultimate again. So that way I can actually show some designing. Otherwise, I'd be logging in under Matthew and, and doing that, uh, doing it under there. But uh, I've got so many things already set up in admin, so might as well keep it in here. Um, uh, you know, change password lets you change in the password. Logged in users shows you who's logged in. You can shut them down from here. Something that, you know, you can't do in Student Manager, but uh, you can through the report wizard. Uh, that just logs them out of the report wizard. Uh, scheduling reports, um, I will talk about that uh, later in this session. Uh, template editor, so that's, um, yeah, let's just pull one up. These, the templates, yeah, let's, um, oh, I won't save anything. 
but the templates themselves this is this is kind of what you see in student manager um this this kind of behind the scenes um um what it's using to actually show the data uh, so this has some basic things like the date, page number, column heading. It's got a, a color design with it. Uh, the group headers are in a different color. Really, I would think if you're getting into here, it's because you're wanting to ch adjust a color scheme or something like that. You shouldn't probably mess uh, with really the field template, the group footer template, you know, these things here. Or really the record count unless you are wanting to put you know this as a text color of of something um oh let's change it to red so you could change a text color fairly easy uh this is a summary total uh line uh here so um like i said i'm not going to save this but just realize you can make some changes behind the scene there is also a way to uh, get to it from uh, the actual report itself if and and adjust things uh, in in that moment but um, uh, options so this has all sorts of stuff this display ribbon instead of toolbar and menu that's what I've turned on to get this uh, the the buttons instead of having the drop down menu um, I've been playing with it now for a few days um, and Frankly, I like it. So I don't know if you guys like it, but uh, you could definitely turn it on or off in here. Uh, there are all sorts of other things. Probably big thing week starts on. Well, I think most everybody, their calendar week starts on Monday. Uh, year starts, you guys may have a July to June uh, year or, you know, you. Um, Whatever your fiscal year is, you can change that in here. Uh, this is really, it helps with when um, doing your formulas, your date uh, based on dates. Uh, so that'll that'll help those things. Uh, default template. So that temp template I just brought up was the basic or business modern. You could set that as your default template. Um, Standard, I think, is just what ones um, just came in. Um, anyway, we'll look at some of these other uh, templates when we actually get to a report and start seeing some stuff so you can actually see what that template uh, is actually doing. Um, proxy, you're probably never going to do anything with. Uh, as far as data, uh, if you're using SQL ser Server, you probably want to check mark this process null values specially uh, that way it's converting those to blank dates instead of leaving them as nulls um, that'll help things uh, there um, email these are this your email settings in student manager are copied into the report wizard uh, when you get it uh, actually, on a, every time you launch uh, the report wizard, it's reading those student manager um, uh, email values or email settings straight from there every time. So if you change them in student manager, they are automatically going to carry over into the report wizard. It's one of the few things that actually cross populate uh, between the two programs. But uh, uh, so you really you're probably not going to mess with this because it's it should have came over correctly from student manager and my mail server is set i you have a program called papercut uh, which simulates a mail server and actually lets me see some of the uh, emails and things like that so that's what i'm going to be um, uh, showing when i email a report here later that is what's going to uh, hopefully pop up if it works today. Uh, contact information, so this is kind of some general information about you, you guys. Um, it does show up in some report areas, but really it's more with um, 
when you do get an error in the program and it, it sends a, a error report uh, to uh, support at aceware.com. So um, yeah, just fill in that stuff. If you've got uh, locations, this is the data location. So this is the report wizard location, the data location. So if these things do move, uh, we can um, um, adjust those things. And updates, automatically check for updates, probably a good thing. I I keep that off uh, because I want to, to well, I get notifications uh, uh, by email when there's an update, so I can update not only this, but the actual uh, install program for this for new users and things like that. So I want to keep things kind of kind of separated in that respect. Um, import email addresses. This would be for who you're emailing reports to, and then re usage reporting just kind of tells you what's what's been happening with the wizard. Uh, help, help, come on. Big thing: the check for updates. This uh, quickly goes out and sees if they are any new updates. If you aren't running 8.0, do the check for updates and it should then download. If you do have problems, um, um, this the server that the program is located on or is, is being fed from is in Canada. And I know some servers are set to not allow international um, downloads. So if you're in a case like that, uh, let me know and I can get you the update a different way. Uh, online support, this brings up, oh, it popped up on my other screen. Uh, this brings up on aceware.com, the SM reports um, uh, help guide. So everything you need to know, um, you know, walking through, Ah, come on. Those arrows are very tiny and you got to hit them exact. Okay, so creating a report, a quick report, all these different report types, it walks you through in the help guide, step by step, what you need to do. So you can see that uh, stuff from there. Um, yeah, technical support. Um, really just email your technician or email me. We are trying to get some of the other technicians um, more comfortable with the report wizard and, and um, in figuring out some of the issues. So um, yeah, use the, use that resource rather than the buttons in here. Uh, so that is the basic overview of some of the tools. Uh, one of the things in here, okay, what happened? I've lost, did I set myself? Um, user can create reports, save. I somehow have lost that ability. Okay, home. Okay, there's my new button. Now it's live. Uh, under the new button, uh, all the different report types you can create. Uh, also, you can create a new folder. So that's what I'm going to do right now is for this webinar series, I'm going to create a new folder. That way we can easily find the, uh, the uh, reports that we create. And now in there, I am going to do a new quick report. Unless there's any questions. Um, Sharon, are there any questions at the moment? Not at the moment. Carry on. Great. Uh, so new quick report. Uh, first thing is, so the reason why the report wizard is called a report wizard is because it takes you through step by step. And that's what a software wizard is supposed to do is take you through step by step in, in building something. So this is, this is what the report wizard is for. Step by step. First step, create a report name. Um, 
uh, probably needs to be something in the general vein of what you're trying to go for. You can rename the report later, but uh, I'm going to do an instructor listing report and probably some comments. You want to fill in some things about what you're trying to accomplish uh, with this report or, or something like that. Uh, that's for kind of just internal notes. That's not going to show up anywhere on the actual report. The report name is going to be kind of the report title uh, right there, dead center at the top of, of what uh, your report is. So, and by the way, a quick report, this is kind of your standard um, li listing, you know, you're creating a, a series of data, um, you know, in columns and rows of, of what you're trying to see. So next, step two is selecting your data. So you go, first of all, to the table that you want to use. You can see I've got a bunch of, of items here that say with archive. Um, so basically this is for performance. If you just want course information, not necessarily out of, or, out of archive, you just want current course data, just select the course. If you are wanting to see historical over years and years and years, you'll want to do the course with archive um, so that you can bring in both sets of data automatically. And it's not, you don't have to do anything else because uh, there's already behind the scenes, it's basically combined the course table and the archive course table into one table. It slows things down, especially when you try to pull in like registrations across the archive. Uh, so as much as possible, try not to do an archive item. But I'm trying to do an instructor listing. So the main thing I want to get to is the instructor uh, table. And let's see. Good thing. I guess let's do first name. And I'm just double clicking. You can also go, let's see, last name. You can highlight and then hit the add select button. Um, if I can hit it, I don't know, my mouse is being touchy or something today. Uh, maybe it's go to meeting. But anyway, uh, bring over, um, you can email address, click, hold, and drag, and bring it over whichever way you're more comfortable with or do it all three ways like I just did. Uh, you can bring a field over into the report. Notice now that I've got data, it's brought live this preview button down here. At any time, as long as the preview button has become live, you can preview your report. And I don't have too many uh, instructors in my demo database, so it didn't take very long to run. If you got hundreds and hundreds of uh, instructors, it may take you a little longer to uh, to run um, in in your system. Um, so it, yeah, right there, we're done. Five minutes to create a report, uh, if even that. Uh, so very simple to, to do something like this. And well, I mean, there's some things wrong here, like it's not in alphabetical order or really in the sort of order. Um, it's actually in native order. It's brought in this blank instructor. I don't know if I really want to see that. Um, there's also a blank instructor with an email address. Um, yeah, that's kind of questionable as far as whether or not I want to see that. But, um, um, but yeah, basic information, uh, we've got it. Uh, let's do something a little more complicated, and that's to grab not just instructor data, but maybe let's look at the courses they're teaching. 
So let's go up here. This is where it would be important. Do I want course or course with archive? I want course. I just want to see kind of current courses. Maybe at some point I'll just put in for this year only, um, the 2021 fiscal year. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll look at that. Uh, what course information do I want? I probably want a course code and maybe a title. Uh, title, title, QRST. These are in alphabetical order on the available fields. Um, I'll, these ones that say formula, these have been added in, um, and I'll show formulas at a later date. But all right, so we've got some course information. Let's preview it. Whoa, we got duplicate instructors now. How did that happen? And we got some blanks, some instructors, a blank, instructors, blank, blank, blank. Yeah, there's some weird stuff going on here. Well, what is going on? Well, I've now told it that I want to see all the courses in my demo and with the instructors teaching those courses. So for each course Chuck, Havl Chuck Havlicek is teaching, he is being represented in here for each of those courses. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm getting duplicates. So there's several ways to deal with that. Part of that, well, maybe I want to just see the instructor name once and then the list of courses underneath. And to do that, I've got to make the instructor a group. So in order to do that, that you highlight one of the, probably the main field. If I had instructor ID, that would be definitely the main field. But um, last name, uh, well, maybe email address. Depends on how you want to do this. I'm because I want to see this in last name order on my instructors. I'm going to do my main grouping, and so I'm kind of thinking ahead already here. But so I'm going to do grouping on the last name first. So properties, and if you didn't see that, the, the properties button under here. Once you highlight your your item then you can go to the grouping tab and say you want to group on this field. Uh, there's some other options. I can show account in the group footer. That sounds nice. Um, yeah, other things you can do here. Um, yeah, and main thing though, your main grouping is going to determine the sort order. So do I want to see Descending order or ascending order in last names? Well, in America, we usually see things ascending order. Um, actually, most alphabets out there. So uh, I'm going to keep it ascending. Uh, now I need to set the other instructor fields to be with that group. So highlight first name, properties, go over to the grouping include this field in the group header four. So this, this is where you're setting that grouping link. Um, if you did a group on this field, it would basically set a second grouping. Um, a good example of that would be like if you got course data with registration data and payment data, that's three separate groups. You know, your courses with all the registrations listed underneath, but within each registration, all the payments listed in, underneath that. So that uh, that's not this situation. I want to include the group. Um, oh, another thing here. Okay, well, let's do the same thing with uh, email address while I'm here. Um, Include last name. If if there was more than one group, I could set which group it's going to fall under. 
So now let's preview, see what's going on. And come on, mouse. There we go. Uh, so here's our blank uh, instructor uh, set on all these courses. We've got an Arthur, somebody showing up down here at the bottom. Should continue over Arthur Alexander. Uh, is teaching these courses. Jamie Benning is teaching these courses. Bill Clark. Okay. Um, this works out well. Uh, we've got some out of order stuff with the uh, the courses, but at least it's not showing my instructors multiple times. It is showing me a total count, um, 18 records. I don't see 18. Well, there might be chopped off from the previous page. 25 records. I've got some duplication or something still going on, and it's coming up with a weird total. Uh, but anyway, that uh, we can work on later. So the next thing to look at, though, would be how to get all this information, Chuck Havacek and his email address, all on one line. And that's with last name instructor and there is a option under the grouping place all fields in the group header on the same line well that's going to clean some things up i believe so there's our blank instructor arthur alexander well it's already saved us a little bit of space because it before it was just showing first name arthur and then spilling everything over to the second page so yeah, we got some a um, little bit of space saving going on here. Uh, got a lot of empty space. Maybe we want to show some more fields from uh, the course. Maybe we want to show uh, begin date and end date. That's a good thing to know. Doo -doo -doo. I'm still under the course table, so if I come up here to begin date and end date. Uh, all right, preview that. Uh, I lost my grouping. What the heck? Ah, last name went disappeared. Um, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> last name and you can reorder in here by the way just click hold and drag which item you're wanting to do and now if i go back to properties oh you can double click on the last name to get to properties by the way group on this field i've got a set include oh and i forgot to do the uh, properties grouping include okay and back here place all the fields in the same line now if I preview there we go now we're seeing begin date and end date uh, it's still it's eaten up that the white space we've got a little bit extra white space though here in between um, and that's because the course title field is 75 characters in your database. Well, most of your titles aren't that many characters. So let's shorten it down. Let's save some space. So if I come down here to course code, get into the properties, one of these tabs is format. Wait, no, yeah display is I'm in the wrong field I'm going to the course title course title is what I want to shorten down and I said 75 actually it's 95 um, so in the display you can change the width if you unclick the auto fit column you can dial this down maybe down to 50 and then what do you want to do with that extraneous data if the field is now too narrow to show the 
entire title. And you can word wrap, you can cut, uh, and do ellipsis either at the end or in the middle. Uh, I don't know why you would want the ellipsis in the middle. But anyway, I'm going to word wrap. And let's hit OK, preview. Do, do, do. 75. Um, I'm probably still too long with my 50 characters. Um, do I have any? Yeah, none of them are spilling into a second line. That's one of the things I was wanting to show. Okay, let me shorten this down even more. Um, title. Come back here, title. Let's ratchet this down to 30 and preview that. This should get us some word wrapping. Okay, here's one. We've got a couple here on the first page. So it, it, it takes everything it can fit on the first line, it's going to fit, and then bring down to the second line this, this extra field or this extra word. Um, and then it pushes down, then the start of the next field down. Let's see if we've got some, should have some on uh, page. Yeah, here we go. So all these in, in a row here that are pushed down, it is keeping a gap separated in between each one uh, so that we can see that stuff. So it's not going to put data on top of other data is, is what I'm really wanting to show. So. Um, uh, you can see things like that. Now we got more white space. Let's display some more stuff. Um, let's do from the course table. If I know my alphabet. Um, maybe we want to know the number of sessions. Sessions. Sessions, come on. And maybe we also want to see that course time field so we can see um, da, 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 time. See, see that um, what that the meeting schedule is like. So if I preview that, da, da, Session one, it's skipping an extra space in between because it's now pushed this time field down into a second row. Well, maybe you don't want to do that. Um, if you're trying to keep everything on one line, uh, there is definitely some room for adjustment. Session number, that's taken up a whole big sp space. Let's uh, change the label on that. So if I come up here, ah, come on. Mouse, listen to me. OK, properties on the session number. You can change the header of any of these fields uh, to what you want them to be. I've gone in here and programmed all these to what I think you guys would like but maybe you don't like it, especially here where it's taking up too much space. So maybe I just want it to be number. Preview that, see what that does. That's brought us back to one line. Yeah, now it's one nice tight column here. Just by changing the label on it uh, has brought it down uh, to be nice and, and and neat with the rest of your data. So this is looking pretty good, um, but maybe I don't need to see 20 courses escrow. I don't need escrow. Um, so how do we do that? Well, we're only on step two of the report wizard. There's more steps. Let's go next. Let's see what else we got. Ah, filter. So the filter is like in student manager, where you set up a query. Uh, they call it a filter in the report wizard because, well, this is one of the big differences between report wizard and, and student manager. 
Student Manager has the query system separate from the report system. So you could run query for different reports. In the report wizard, the query or filter is built into the report. So you're setting it up each and every report a different filter. Hence why you may want to copy reports instead of building from scratch. Or eh, depends on what you're doing. Uh, so filter, I'm going to add, well, instructor, maybe, yeah, I could do some things with instructor. But let's do from the course screen, not the account code. So this, it's not even the, the fields that are available in the report. It could be any field in the tables that you're you're working with. Uh, you can sometimes work with filters from other tables, not you know, not directly with the data that you're working with, but that kind of gets complicated and sometimes gets weird results. But if you definitely work with, you know, or set the filter to be a something that you're using in your report, things will work fine. So course code, I can do a begins with um, value, expression, or field. You can set it up to, to, to look at a different field or go off of an expression. Uh, I'm hoping I have time to show expression at some point, um, but that's not going to be today. Today is booked full. So. Uh, you can put in your value here, or you can ask at runtime. I'm not going to have it ask at runtime. I'm going to set the value. And so each and every time I run this, it's going to run this filter. Course code begins with 21. That will give me my fiscal year 21 courses. So if I preview that, Bingo, all that escrow course is gone. All the 20 courses are gone. Um, we still have the weird out of order thing. A, D, O, U, then back to F, U, F, U, yeah, S. Yeah, it's still not quite in course order, but it's given us a smaller amount of data um, to show show with your instructors so a little bit more concise of a report and probably you know what you need to see for right now you know you don't need to see that historical stuff you want to see what's going on right now um, a question for you while you're there you sure have a question from the audience about um, UDFs and unlimited UDFs are they available in those fields to pull and filter UDFs are unlimited UDFs, um, kind of. And I say kind of because you have to set up a formula to do that. And so I won't be able to show you that, but yeah. you. The short answer is yes, <laughs> but we're not going to see that today. Uh, but definitely UD, uh, regular UDFs. So if you've got... Um, I don't know what I've got in my demo set up already, but uh, course, UDFs, AW example contract, do 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 headcount, sponsor, and then I've got a bunch that aren't defined. Um, so I don't know if maybe there's there's something like sponsor you're wanting, uh, and you can see the values. Oh, I've I don't even know what this means with sponsor, but um that's apparently one of the data elements in the in my demo database that i'm running off of so yeah you can you can set up a a second part to the filter or this can be um you can you can change your curse code to being just the udf and it will it will pull in just that information i don't have a lot of udf data so i still want to show quite a bit so i'm going to leave my filter like this. Other questions? Not right now. Great. 
All right, next step. Step four is sort. I've been talking about sort all through this, about how I wanted it sort of different. But notice, because I've got a grouping, the initial sort order is that grouping, so the last name. Well, you know, I'm, I don't think I have any instructors with the same last name, but maybe the next thing I would want to have sorted by is first name to distinguish out those two or three or however many instructors, you know, who knows how many instructors you guys have with last name of Smith. Um, so yeah, sorting then by first name is would be good for you guys. Probably doesn't need to happen in my demo. Uh, begin date on the courses, that might be good. I would probably rather see course code uh in in sort order and i can change it descending ascending uh through here uh this should be unique to where i don't need to sort by any other elements um but you can't you know maybe you've got multiple courses that have the same begin date and you're wanting to secondarily sort on actually this would be third last name's first sec first name is second, begin date would be third. Um, so you want to begin date and then course code within the same begin date, uh, whichever way you want to do it. I just want course code. So if I preview that, this should look a little bit more OCD, uh, which is me, yay. Uh, so looking good as far as seeing courses, underneath instructors um yeah i don't know what else we can do oh we could pretty this up step four um step i didn't mean to do that get begin date next step five formatting options there's all sorts of things for one thing if you've noticed you know sometimes i preview and the report is in portrait. Sometimes I preview it's in landscape. You can set it where you think it needs to be. This is wide enough of a report, you know, with all the data elements I've got. It needs to be in landscape. So either I can explicitly set it or keep it at automatic and it would it would do that. If I do need to change the header different from what the uh, report name is, you can set that here. Um, margin information if you're needing you know a bigger left margin you can move it over columns um this is actually one of the new things in in the report wizard um is setting up columns so if you've you know like before i just had course code course course uh, title and it was you know it wasn't taking up very much room i could set the columns to be multiple columns on the same page and it would show two across. Well, now I've got so much information, that's not gonna work. So you can mess around with columns and do stuff like that. Here's that template information. So I've been running the standard template um, because that, in my options, that's the default template. Um, but there are a host of other, and the reason why I've got Professional one is I've got some somewhere it's duplicated my templates, and that's why it's got all these that say one. Um, modern, come on, modern. Modern, I think looks nice. So I can just switch the template, and it brings in some nice features. Colorizes the the uh, top header. It it or puts yeah white lettering on a blue background, which I think makes that pop. You got black on a kind of a darker gray uh, for the instructor name information. Here, let me go to uh, uh, the second page here, so we can see more. And then every other um, data element is colorized either this light gray or just white. And and it's surrounded by this blue or the the nice elliptical. Um, so I think this looks great. This is how I would want to see 
this report. Obviously, when I print it out the, in black and white, that blue is going to change to a different shade. But um, I don't know if you want to spend the extra money for the color printer or not, but um, uh, you could definitely play with that. Um, you could also go into the, actually here, let's show it. Uh, advanced layout. If I check mark that and go edit, this is how I, this is the other way to get into the uh, template. So this is, I'm just modifying the template for this report. And so instead of the blue background, maybe I want to set it to black. So now I got white text on that black background. That should help. I want to make this a save. Yeah, file and close. So now if I preview, yeah, that makes it look even better. So at least in my opinion, you guys, you can do whatever you want. Um, that's up to you. Uh, so I think I've played around with this report long enough. I think it is time to finish. Finish is what saves it. Um, by the way, let me get back to step one. I forgot to check when I was on here that the folder was the new folder I set up. So yeah, wanted to make sure. Finish. There's my new report under here. So now running the report. I've created this report. Anybody can now come in here and just hit preview. Whether they're a report designer, or report runner, they can preview the report and they get it. If printing it, well, that's going to send it to the printer. Oh, there's, I thought it would come up with the Windows print options, but it's printing out to the printer. I can hear it uh, across the room. But uh, other things you want to see, you can change the filter for the report right from here. So maybe um, temporarily you want to change it to 22 to start seeing next year's courses or, or things like that. Uh, change the sort options from here. You don't have to go in and edit the report. Uh, some of the other options gives gives you that information. Main thing though is output. So you printer that can be either from from the printer or you know from the print button up here, or you can set it uh, set it in here, uh, which printer you want that to go to, and then print from here. Uh, so hit OK and it would have gone. Uh, if you want to export it to a file, so this would be, actually this has a ton of different ones. So if I hit file, yeah, ace hold, ace hold is where I usually keep all my templates, you have all sorts of different things go into my ace hold uh, folder. But you can do CSV, bitmap, GIF, JPEG, Microsoft Word, Excel, PDF. That's probably a good one to have. Uh, there is a Excel full format, data format. Um, it just kind of depends on the st stuff you are uh, exporting out. If you've got memo fields, you're going to need the full format. It's going to be slower. Uh, if you just want data, now it's all that fancy stuff I did to the report. When you export it in Excel, it's not going to be like that. So let's see that. Save. And. Doo -doo -doo. Now it's in my quick launch or quick access. Um, what happened? Do, do, do. Seven, where's it? Didn't save. 
Oh, I got a process. Right? There it goes. Okay. Um, so this, we see that duplicated with your your instructors again, but it's got all the course, you know, it's brought it into a flat, what I call a flat um, table style um, with your different information into Excel. And it does the same thing with CSV. PDF, it would do, you know, actual looks like um, your your uh, report. So PDF. Oh, I don't know if I want to do Microsoft. I want to do regular PDF. There's the it processes it different depending on if you choose that uh, uh, Word uh, versus regular PDF. Uh, by the way, you would need Word, Word installed on your computer in order to to see uh, in it. it use Word to make it a PDF. But, so this is PDF. I've got a question for you real quick. Sure. You you talked a lot about things to include in the filter. What if I want to exclude some things? How do I leave out courses that may be canceled or courses that have yep. zero registrations? Can you demonstrate that? Yeah. Um, so if I go back here to edit, and that was step, wait, three. Uh, you can use exclude or in the filter. You Most of the time, why you would want to use exclude is if you're referencing something that's already in the filter. So a course code you're wanting to exclude a specific course code. Like it, before I had escrow in there, um, well, course code begins with 21. There's not a, it, escrow doesn't begin with 21, but um, maybe there's a specific 21 membership course you don't want shown. You can use the exclude to not show it. Because when you filter by something and then try to filter by it again, weird things happen and and you don't get the correct results. But uh, if you want to exclude canceled courses, um, I would do it with a filter. And that's to do course, cancel, canceled flag is yes. Well, I want it to be no, I don't want canceled. Say OK and preview that. So any of the courses that were uh, canceled aren't going to show now. Um, don't know if this list is, in my demo, I may not have very many uh, canceled courses. So anyway, something like that, that's that's the best way you would do it. So exclude instructor, no, go to course. Course code, da -da -da, course. Uh, there we go. Course code. Maybe I want exactly equals on this. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da. I'm just going to do begins with and value. And I can actually select. So up here 21, and I don't want ACE pack. That's the package course. So I want to exclude that from this listing. Um, right. I it's you could me exclude yeah. blank instructors, exclude. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's all sorts of things you could do with it. Um, right. It's better Very to put it in the filter, though, if you can. But Very good. in this example, that's you can't. That's the only way you can do it. Other questions? No, and it looks like we've hit that magic hour as well. Um, okay. Anything else you wanted to bring? Lots of good stuff covered today in this beginning session. 
And a lot of you, you know, you can give this a try if you have the wizard. And if you would like to get the wizard, like Matthew said, you can do a free test drive. This would let you get some hands-on work with that and come up with other questions for Matthew. Um, Matthew's going to do part two in two weeks on the 25th. And so certainly you can send me some questions if you are playing, if you want uh, a chance to test drive this, and you come up with other questions, let me know that. Uh, Matthew, did you have anything else to add for today before we let these fine folks nope. move on uh, with their day? I was hoping to get to email and scheduling today, but we will start with that uh, next session. So. Perfect, perfect. So folks, uh, you have a good rest of the day and the upcoming weekend, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks for part two. This session's recorded. If you have colleagues that want to jump on this or you want to review with, a, with your test drive. With that, we'll let you go. Thanks again for joining us today. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.